Welcome to Goddess Talk with Balaji. Today is a beautiful day <laughs> because I have a wonderful, wonderful guest here with us, Miss Natasha Pierre. Hi, Natasha. How are you? Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you for signing up. Natasha, I'm just getting into it because I've, our energy is just in love right now. Yes. But um, you were one of the first people that I sent the link out when we were really starting the show. And I was like, I knew exactly who I wanted on this show. And you've always been in the mental health that I've seen on Facebook. Me and you met two years ago. And that was our first and only interaction. It's been two years. Wow. And I literally, I was like, no, I want her on there. Because she does this all day, all online. I just see her talk about mental health and different things. And spirituality and stuff. So you were one of the first ones that I sent that link to. And you booked right away. So yes. you are really like, thank you so much for You're booking. Welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yes. So... Um, we're going to get into it. Miss Natasha Pierre, um, your credentials are just amazing. So I'm just going to read the first part because I want people to understand who you are and what you're about, okay? So Natasha Pierre is an award-winning speaker, author, uh, certified professional life coach, and a mental health advocate with over 20 years of lived experience. Lived experience. Make sure y'all pay attention to that. Her relatable speaking style allows her to connect with the global audience to share the importance of self-awareness, self-advocacy, community building, and effective legislation. There's a lot more to it, but the fact that you have lived experience, okay, but then you have work experience. A lot of people don't understand the two, di you know, the difference between the two. But, you know, tell us a little bit more about you, you know, whatever you're willing to share um, about what it is working within this field of mental health, because you are a certified um Life coach mm -hmm. and also certify what? I've got a lot of she certifications. Got a, lot of <laughs> a lot of certifications, mm -hmm. a lot of credentials, but when I am closer. Okay, yeah. there I am. When I'm speaking in speaking about mental health, mm -hmm. the only thing for me that's important is that I have lived experience. Mm -hmm. All of the other credentials and certifications are for people who are impressed by that. Mm. And for other academics and clinicians who want to understand why I have a seat at the table. Mm -hmm. But for people who are living with any mental health diagnosis, mm -hmm. all they want to know is that there's someone speaking to them and for them that understands. Yes. There's a difference between having a textbook understanding of depression and actually laying in the bed for five hours, pressing snooze every eight minutes because you Can literally you? cannot get out of bed. Okay. And within our community, I think we want to really touch on that mm -hmm. because uh, a lot of us have been misdiagnosed, overdiagnosed, all that, you know. Mm -hmm. So there are some people who truly have mental illnesses that do need help. But then there's people who are being diagnosed with something that have none of those. It's just, you know, the school system. And we know the prison to um, the school to prison pipeline. So we see both sides. So, um what have you experienced with, have you experienced people who've been misdiagnosed? I'm sure you probably have. Absolutely. I think in our society, what, what I'm seeing a lot of is mental health diagnoses being given to people who are experiencing legitimate trauma. Mm. And trauma is whatever trauma is for you. Yes. And so one child can go through their parents being divorced and be fine. Mm -hmm. They just have two homes with mm -hmm. two bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Another child experiences that differently mm -hmm. and may have behaviors that automatically they are put into the box of the must be ADHD, yeah. must be depression, here comes the medication. Mm -hmm. And I think what we have to do is be careful because children evolve. Children grow up in the they same do. way that they're losing their baby teeth, mm -hmm. their personalities are being formed, yeah. their minds are being formed, and to give a child, to medicate a natural response, mm -hmm. a typical response to any life event, any trauma, in my opinion, is dangerous. Okay, so let's, let's backtrack a little bit, because uh, within our community especially, we have, supposedly everybody keeps saying there are a lot of single mothers, mm -hmm. um, you know, single households, single parent households, and how this affects our men and um, women, our male and female children. So you see that where, hey, that is a trauma to a lot of people not having a two-parent household. Can you speak about that? Because you just mentioned, you can have kids grow up in the same household, one is perfectly fine, 
that they they're fine with the the way things are. Mom is the on the you know the breadwinner and all that. But you may have a different child again, same household, but they're having the behavioral issues. They're having the outbursts. So what what would you advise parents who may be dealing with this themselves right now? What would be your advice to them? <clears throat> I'm I'm really hard on two groups of people: mm-hmm. parents and and faith based communities. Please. When it comes to parents, here's the deal. I love it. When you have a child, Mm -hmm. whether or not you are ready to be a parent, Mm -hmm. you are a parent. And a story. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And so your goal, your assignment, your job is to ensure that you're raising a well-adjusted person. Mm -hmm. That's your job. Again, children can grow up in the same household. One experiences the divorce or the abuse Mm -hmm completely different Mm -hmm. from another and I think you know one word that I really get away from and hate using is the term normal because there is no normal normal is whatever it is for that person so when it comes to trauma when it comes to children and and especially in you know all communities black every community Mm -hmm. we've got to look at you know I I shared a couple years ago uh, how do you deal with PTSD for Mm -hmm. an entire race of people. Mm -hmm. And I was referencing the black community. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that post-traumatic stress disorder is a term used to define the experiences and the feelings and the thoughts after something has ended. Mm -hmm. So after war, after rape, after a car crash. For many people in the black community, traumas are still happening. Thank you. So... Have you ever heard of Dr. Joy DeGroy? I have not. She has a book, and it's called Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome. Mm -hmm. Because everybody thinks slavery ended, and so, you know, we should just get over it. That's what a lot of people think. Like, oh, you know, but black people or melanated people, you want to call yourself Asiatic, you want to call yourself the original, Mm -hmm. we are still traumatized by that situation, by that time frame. And this goes across the globe because those in the Caribbean who went through the Haitian Revolution or who went through, you know, the Puerto Ricans, you know, we got the, um, dang, why am I blanking on the Puerto Ricans right now? Uh, my friend, she gonna be on here one time. She's, she Puerto Rican. We gonna talk about the fact that, you know, they have their own history mm-hmm. of that. You know, you have the Africans who went through colonization. You could talk about Leopold. You could talk about so much stuff that happened across the globe. And everybody, again, not one-sided, has not realized that everybody's been experiencing trauma globally. Yes. In our melanated community. Absolutely. And we are still dealing with those traumas till this very day. And, you know... When we get into to ethnicity, sometimes people turn their ears off. Mm. So let me explain it in this way. For the clients that I, I have worked with who were combat veterans, they mm-hmm. leave the war zone, but fireworks, mm-hmm. police sirens, mm-hmm. car backfiring still sets, them off. still sets them off. For a woman that may have been raped, mm-hmm. the certain smell, the cologne, yeah. the, the body type, yeah. those are things that can still set them off. Oh, yes. I mean, it's just... An, it's, it's a sense. It's a sense. It's in, it's in our society. And I think, you know, there's not enough conversation around what trauma is, mm-hmm. how it looks, mm-hmm. and how we're supposed to support people dealing with it. Okay. Conversations like this, I love. Mm-hmm. Because... You know, as women, we talk about everything. You know, I'll be like, okay, we, but tell yeah, me about the new guy that you're dating. Tell me, you know, how's the no job? New guy, by the way. Okay. No new guy. I don't want anybody on here just like, oh, what's she talking about? Uh, no, there's no new guy. Please don't do that to me. I'll but we still... talk about Make everything. It. And we're yeah. comfortable, even before yes. we're talking about, you know, birthdays everything, and yeah. everything. Why is it not commonplace for me to say, how are you doing? Or mm-hmm. I noticed this. Mm-hmm. Or you seem stressed. Mm-hmm. Or even, do you think you might need to get your medication mm-hmm. tweaked a little bit? Mm-hmm. Why are we not having those conversations? And I said that, because we had this conversation in the car, I said that I've been really blessed to have true friends that we do have completely all these conversations. I was just talking to a friend of mine last night, and literally we were on the phone till midnight, and we're talking about trauma. We're talking about, hey, I'm dealing with stuff from 
mommy issues, daddy issues, and this might be why I'm in certain relationships or not in certain relationships. Mm -hmm. You know, certain things are very generational. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that could be traumatizing. It is not to the point that, hey, somebody's depressed or somebody has anxiety or stuff, but it may still lead them to certain actions are uh, just, they just predispose from your generational issues. What your parents' parents dealt with, to what they dealt with, to what you are now dealing with. So now, how do we break that cycle? You know, breaking those curses, you know, and certain things is not always mental health. It's True. how do we have those emotional conversations to allow us to heal? Because Absolutely. we are in a state of trauma, and I want us so bad, so bad, my people. I want us to heal from all those yes. things. And so speaking to people like you who are dealing with the mental health specifically mm -hmm. and are saying that, hey, it's not always a mental health thing. It's just no. the fact that you're dealing with trauma and you weren't coached or guided in how to deal with those responses. That's it. I tell people all the time, we do not medicate uh -huh. human emotion. Mm -hmm. If you, if someone close to you dies, mm -hmm. you are a human. Yeah. I expect you to experience sadness. Yeah. If you're not experiencing any sadness, I might be concerned. I tell people it usually takes one full calendar year for you to just deal with all of the foundational issues. Mm -hmm. That's going through every birthday, driving by the, the, the favorite restaurant, mm -hmm. going through every holiday. Now if you're grieving in year seven the same way that you grieved in on day one, now we're talking about a mental health mm -hmm. Concern, yeah. Not saying mental illness, because yeah. they're, they're two different it's things. It's concerns, because you could have a break. Everybody has a moment to just, like some people can literally lose a parent mm -hmm. and they coped with it very well all those years. And they may be something literally 10 plus years down the line and they're triggered. Absolutely. And I was just talking to another friend today, my nail tech, we be having, I be having my sessions with her. Like literally, I'm so blessed with the kind of people I've been surrounded by and who have surrounded me, right? To the point that, it was just about, hey, you dealt with something and you didn't know how to deal with it. You were triggered by this and this just set you off. Because I've really worked. I'm an Aries. We're talking about yes. we're both Aries. I've worked on my responses, trying not to be fire in that negative space. Because fire can be very healing. Absolutely. Fire can be very healing, very soothing, all those things. But it can be very dangerous if let loose. And the ego of an Aries can be brutal. And I'm Nigerian too, so if y'all know some Nigerians, we could be cocky. <laughs> we could be everything. And I've worked on all those, you know, different elements of myself. I really had to break myself down to work on all that stuff. And certain times, if certain things are real specific for me, mm -hmm. that trigger me. Mm -hmm. And as I try to avoid those things, and then one day I was just triggered so hard that I flipped out on a friend. And it was like, you know what? I'm not apologizing because this was a trigger for me. And... It was like, I kind of told you I had mm -hmm. these, this thing, and I kind of was trying to avoid it, and you just kept pushing at it, and then when I went off... Well, you know, what you're talking about is, is emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. and this is why it's so important that we, we throw away the word normal. Mm. And every person creates the wellness plan that works for them. Mm. Emotional intelligence, there are five tenets. The first is self-awareness. You need to be aware of you. Every person, whether you have a mental health diagnosis mm -hmm. or not, you need to be aware of you, aware of your triggers, mm -hmm. aware of what sets you off, aware of times of the month, the year, the whatever. The moon cycle, the, moon the retrograde, cycle. You need all to that. be aware of yeah. that. You do. And self-awareness first mm -hmm. then allows you to self-regulate, mm -hmm. which means, I know for me, there are certain times of, of the week, the month, the year that being around other people just isn't for me. Mm -hmm. Working from a Panera mm -hmm. Bread isn't going to work. Mm -hmm. I need to be at home because I have to protect my energy, my strength spirit my me yes and then when you 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 understand self-awareness and you're working with self-regulation mm -hmm. then you're a self-advocate then I can tell my friends and I can tell people you know what this isn't a good time for me to hang out let's do it next yeah. week or let's do it tomorrow and you know within mental health we get so it's a conversation that people are afraid to talk about I've had men tell me that they rather have a conversation with me about their prostate exam than to talk about mental health. And and here's why, and I understand it, but here's why. It's because every man has to do that. Yeah. 
Every man doesn't experience depression or anxiety or fear of being around their children or their wife or their mm -hmm. girlfriend based on what they've experienced. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, stigma is part of why I share my story, part of why I, I speak openly, mm -hmm. because someone needs to see that sometimes a person experiencing a mental health challenge may look like me. Looks well, identical to me. The World you know? Health Organization yes. actually states that one in four people are going to experience a mental crisis in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. One in four. We need one more person in this room, and, and okay, I'll oh, be the four, one in yeah. four. But you know what? It might be four out of four. All right. Yes. So we are going to take our first break. Okay. If anybody wants to call in to speak to Natasha or I, it's 813-444-9588. We'll be right back on God is Talk. Thank you. We good? Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, we take our minute break. Yes. Woo. I know it's not her. Hi, guys. Thanks for watching. Huh? <laughs> so, um, Rick, you know, do you know who Rick is? Rick who? Um, Rick Rollins. He has a gentleman's, like, uh, suits and all that stuff. He has a shop here. Mm -hmm. And um, off the air, we're going to talk about that. I don't know. I feel like joining John conversation. Huh? You, <laughs> you want to join, join in? Join yeah. in. Because you have experience, right? We're talking yeah, to our sound guy, myself. Esteban. So we're not just talking to the wall. Yeah. But thank you guys for watching. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, if anybody has any questions, hey, Ziza. There you go. You got it? Yeah. Turn that around. There you go. Perfect. Um, let me make my note of where we stopped at because you said the first two um, is self-awareness. Self-awareness, self-regulation. Those are those are the main ones that I focus on yeah. in terms of mental health. Because mm -hmm. many times people think just because they have a, a mental ill, a diagnosed mental illness, that it gives them license to act a fool whenever no, they want. No, oh, no, it does not. You, it does not. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to write this down because... You have to learn how to control your disability. That's what I just put down. Impulse control. You have one. I just put impulse control down. Because I have ADHD and I even try to control... But you worked on your impulse control, right? Yeah, I do have You've got to. Yeah. Everybody has. You know, sometimes it doesn't work and then it comes out. Yeah. I try to... But the thing is, again, the self-awareness of when certain things may trigger you, right? When you yeah. feel like you're overwhelmed, you this yes. or that, and then it's like, <gasps> gotta take a moment. Here we go. All right, all right. Welcome back to Goddess Talk. Our special guest is Miss Natasha Pierre. Who is a licensed mental health specialist? I'm, I'm just gonna put because you yes. have so many cer certifications. Just whatever, hodgepodge it together. You have so many certifications or certifi ugh, certificates. The African just came out of me. <laughs> certain words, certain, certain words still trigger me. Where I still say it with the with the little twang. Um, but we left off. You were talking about self awareness. That's the first step, mm -hmm. and then self regulation. Um, and you said that those are the two things that you really truly focus on in the work that you do. Yes. And what are the other steps? Because you said there's seven steps? There's five of there's them, five. but those are the, the first two. Empathy goes mm -hmm. in into it. But we've got to understand that, you know, when we speak about mental health, there's still considerable stigma when it comes to mental health. Mm -hmm. So people feel comfortable speaking about Prostate. cancer, mm -hmm. prostates, um, lupus, whatever. But when it comes to mental health, that's when we voice and we've got to whisper yeah. about it. We can't it's speak. It's a stigma, especially there within our stigma. community. And so, especially. really, any person that is, if first, if you have a mental health diagnosis, mm -hmm. self-awareness and self-regulation are non-negotiables for you. Mm -hmm. You've got to be a great self-advocate, and then you also have to have a role in educating the community. Mm -hmm. Everyone, you know, you walk down the street, yeah, everyone has an idea of what cancer is mm -hmm. and what it does. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows what the flu is, the cold. Do people know what anxiety is? Only what they've seen in movies, unless they've been personally oh affected gosh, or yes. they know someone. Do they know what autism is? Well, isn't that when, like, a person can't, like, have eye contact? No, no it's not. Because then we could talk about Asperger's and all these things. Okay, so let me just drop what I have a knowledge of. Yes. I've been working in the field of developmental disability mm -hmm. since 2010. And I own a company in Jersey where we work with individuals with disabilities, right? So we do the case management and mm -hmm. all those things. So I myself have 
I'm qualified to have the conversation yes. with you. Um, and I dislike and despise a lot of movies that depict what my so-called client will look like. And it's like, I tell my employees, look, you may read their assessment and guess what? You meet this person, they are not like that. Or you may read the assessment and think that they're not like something and then guess what? You meet this person who is out of control. But the thing is to understand that have the experience with the person to make make a judgment call. You see what Absolutely. I'm saying? And it comes with training because I train people on takedowns, which we call uh, personal control techniques. Um, they may call something else in Florida, right. but up north we call it, uh, gosh, it's been a minute since I did the training. But I was the one who was training on those things. So I know how to take somebody down who's sick something, who came charging at me. Mm -hmm. I train people on how to do that. But guess what? What triggered him to, you know, to, to, to do that, you know? And so when you backtrack and realize that, hey, somebody said something slick to him. Somebody did not want him to have uh, a specific um, reward that he was supposed to get. You know, somebody, you know, another individual screamed across the room and that just set him off. Well, guess what? He came into program or whatever in a bad mood. So there are certain things that you may not realize in your immediate environment that could trigger somebody. You know, it is, it, it really, I don't even have any politically correct way of saying it. It blows my mind mm -hmm. how how much people can have tunnel vision. Mm -hmm. I remember a, a case that I had, you know, the, the child was acting out in school, mm -hmm. fighting, not doing work, okay? The only place that he behaved was on the football field. I was like, okay, let's be engaged. A, this is engaged. Let me figure out what's going on. Well, the child was living with a, a family member. I think it was an uncle. Mm -hmm. And my first question was, okay, where's, the, where's his mother? Mm -hmm. Where's his father? And so I think the mother was in a treatment facility, the father was in prison, mm -hmm. living with a family member. So my next question was, okay, have you all had the conversation with him about where his parents are? No? No. Okay. Now when I speak with the child, he's telling me that he's acting out, he doesn't want to be in class because he's being teased mm -hmm. about not having parents. Kids are rude and mean and just, oh my God. So this whole bullying thing really pissed me off because I was bullied. I'm tall, okay? But it was always a thing because I dealt with the racist part of bullying, mm -hmm. right? Where, yeah, I was tall and I was being called because my family came here when I was seven years old from Nigeria. And we moved to a town. Um, I grew up in Willenboro, but that was after we moved out and came back into Willenboro. But I lived in a space, um, in this place called Town, East Windsor, mm -hmm. New Jersey, right? And it was like, it was hell for me, but my sister flourished in that area, right? And I dealt with some things there where it was just like being bullied. And it's just like, look, I could really knock your block off, but then it's like... <laughs> I'm telling the teachers, I'm telling the people that, hey, this is what's happening to me and they're not believing me because I'm this tall black chick, you know, or the fact that, hey, if I do now aggress towards the person, it must have been me. But it's like, hold up, the person pulled my book bag or did this or said something. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, your accent, you know, we all know the African booty scratcher jokes, you know, all those things. And I dealt with that, not just from white folk, but from our folk, too. And it was like, at times, it was like, I wanted to not exist in this space anymore, you know? And a lot of people think, okay, were you suicidal? It's like, that's not the case. It's just that if you go home and tell your parents who are also foreigners, the foreigners are what? They're working. They're coming home. They're checking home. Everything's fine. So what, what, what's the problem? Yeah. You know, and not saying nothing like my parents didn't do what they're supposed to do. It's just that you can't always blame the parents when they may not know how to coach a child through that because they're not in that space. And at that time, we're talking mm -hmm. about in the early 90s. Yes, right. 2000s early. now, you have ways to do this with your children. At that time, that's not, that's not what they were thinking about. Mm -hmm. You know, my parents may call the school teacher and tell them, oh, this is what's happened to my daughter. What do you want to do? Back then, they weren't doing anything. They, right. they weren't suspending like they suspend like crazy now. Right. You know, there wasn't all those counselors to work a child through that stuff at that time with me. You know, so I'm now in my 30s and it's like I have dealt with those things on my own. And when I see these young kids who are going through the same stuff and you have kids now committing suicide. You have kids now mm -hmm. aggressing to the point of true violence guns everything knives we had that in the uk where the knife uh the knifing is crazy over there you know yeah. bombs and stuff like that and it's just like where do we truly help and assist these children 
yeah. to heal with whatever it is going on inside that they don't have to do that and literally ruin their lives and others as well. This is really a community conversation. Hmm. And years and generations ago, we really had an oral tradition where families communicated. Yeah. This is why it's so important for parents to be educated about mental health. I am a huge proponent of mental health first aid certification. I think if you have a child, if you are around a child, if you know a child, mm -hmm. it is your responsibility mm -hmm. to get that training. Again, I am hard on parents. I'm hard on parents because I work with your kids. Mm -hmm. And I know how many conversations are going unhad. Yeah. And I know that, here's the thing, we want to think that everything can be done in a school setting. It's not happening. No. Teachers are overworked, underpaid, the classrooms are getting larger, mm -hmm. and they have to teach to a test yeah. in the public school system. So there's a lot of things that they're just not going to be able Absolutely. to address. Absolutely. And parents, you are your child's first parent, first counselor, first trainer, first advocate, first mentor, first everything. First love. After everything. you handle your business, mm -hmm. that's when the community comes in, the mentors, etc. How are we going to fix this? How are we going to support our children? Personally, I believe that, and it's, it's, it's hard to mm -hmm. say, but I'm going to say it. There's a lot of talk mm -hmm. about what are we going to do and how can we fix it? And 19 mi million meetings and 42 conference calls that, and yeah. 22,000 emails to plan something. No, how about you talk to a child? I just finished a self-advocacy training two weeks ago. Nine boys great conversation in the room nine children nine young men two were personally affected by suicide one with a girl a girlfriend mm -hmm. an attempt and one who had someone that actually completed mm -hmm. question they said why aren't they talking to us about stuff like this i felt so hopeless with my friend because and so you do have those friends we, and you do and you you think that you just being a friend is enough, but guess what? They may need more than you as their friend. They may need more than you as their mom, their dad, their advocate, their, all that stuff because it does, like you said, that community. Because a lot of people who have dealt with these suicidal thoughts, they feel literally alone. Yeah. Okay. They feel like there is nobody who understands how I'm feeling. Right. There's nobody who understands what's going on in my head. Right. There's nobody who knows what's going on in my heart, my soul, all this stuff. And I just choose not to exist anymore. And can, can we say that this is not a character flaw? There's nothing wrong with feeling like this. this now, is how not a character how flaw. can we have that conversation without somebody judging? Because it's like, now you want to talk about well, just pray about it. It ain't no daggone prayer. <laughs> it is not prayer. It is not. I'm. It's not that. I. Stop. <laughs> I, uh, I am going to finish this interview, but if you want to yeah. raise my hackles, <laughs> respond to me about mental health mm -hmm. with just pray about it, build your faith, fast and pray, back to church. focus on the things that are good and lovely and all of that stuff. It's not working. Mm -hmm. You know how I know? Because people are dying yeah. in pews. Yeah. People, are di people who attend church regularly are choosing to opt out of this earth. Mm -hmm. So, yes... We would love to create a world where everyone is comfortable and enjoy being here, but that's a that's a no, long that's, range goal. That's a utopia. That's <laughs> utopia. So in the interim, how about we not invalidate a person's experience? Mm -hmm. Yes, someone can get in a car. I know people who've been in like five car crashes, mm -hmm. and they're like, okay, no biggie. I just had my first one this year, and I needed to speak to uh, a trauma informed yeah. care yeah. therapist. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I needed that. Yeah. And so everyone has an experience. Everyone has their truth and when it comes to suicide suicidal thoughts being suicidal mm -hmm. the reason why we are so uncomfortable with that discussion is because we're afraid mm -hmm. we're afraid to have the crucial conversation we're afraid to say the wrong thing we're afraid that if we talk about it then maybe they'll want to do it just like that was the argument for sex years ago yeah. that if we talk about it then you know kids will go and do it and guess now what all these kids literally have stds stis like crazy these kids have no understanding of their bodies, how the body works, what they should do or should not do, um, how to clean themselves before and after, even if they are participating in it, what kind of things to protect themselves from. You know what I'm saying? Like, they don't even know what that little bump on that person's lip 
what that might be. You know what I'm saying? This person may be having a gonorrhea attack. You don't even know There's all those so things. There's so many, many different things. Conversations. And there are missing conversations. But you just said something, and I'm going to go back to something also. Um, the conversation. And the fear that basically um, they may do it, right? Because a lot of parents are scared that if they do, they're going to lose their child, okay? In some way, shape, or form. But sometimes we realize that, guess what? What happens after the attempt or the actual execution of it? That now the regret of, I he tried to talk to me, she tried to speak to me, and I just didn't want to listen. I tried to take him to be baptized, and I tried to, you know, get them the medications. Ativan is only going to do but so much, okay? Um... Ritalin is only going to do but so much because now Ritalin is for what ADHD apparently. But guess what? What happens with that? Have you ever? Um, I've heard uh, this like mm -hmm. suicidal thoughts. Yeah. Or take ADHD pills. Yeah. And I haven't. I don't. That was not your experience. No, because um. Well, I don't take ADHD pills because mm -hmm. um, my doctor doesn't recommend it. I love your doctor because guess what? How many of us go through where doctors are the ones who are like literally? Well, he's having all these behaviors. Well, you could give him this. Well, let's let's back up and, mm -hmm. and recognize where we live. Yeah. This is a country that Farm, is the driven pharmaceuticals. by, you know, capitalism, yeah. pharmaceutical industry. And this is why when I work with my clients, I tell them, you have got to create the wellness plan that works for you. I told someone recently, I don't care if when you hold on to a lizard mm -hmm. and you look into the lizard's eyes, you feel connected to God and it makes you feel at mm -hmm. peace. Hold on to your lizard. Yeah. So we'll be right back, guys. All right, got us talk with Balaji and our special guest, Natasha Pierre. All right, call us if you have any questions or comments. Thanks. Bye. Hold on to your lizard. <laughs> Hold on to your lizard. Hold on to your lizard. Your lizard is my life. <laughs> but here's the thing. Yeah. That's, it's easy to prescribe a pill. You know why? Because I can give you a pill and you're no longer my responsibility. Yeah. I don't have to deal with you anymore. And whatever you do with those pills, yeah, that's, that's on you. Yeah. And if they're not working, it's also on yeah. you. But If you don't take it the regulated way I told you to, that's on exactly. you. If you stop taking it, that's on you. It's like, yo. But it's much harder for me to be... A part of your journey and say, okay, let's journal, let's meditate, yeah. let's pray, let's go for a walk, what let's you're play doing with a puppy. Is true counseling, right? Because I've dealt with that with a lot of my clients where it's like he's having these behaviors, and I'm talking to the parents, like, I'm asking your son what he truly wants to do in life. You didn't know that he wanted to become this kind of person. True. You didn't know that he had aspirations to be in sports management. Right. What? Why would he? He loves sports so much. No, he can be a bagger at Publix. He can be a bagger Why? at the grocery yeah. store. I, I get irritated. I, I literally just speak to one of my clients this week. And he's really one of my true <laughs> stories. I love him. Like, He's been with me since I started my company, right? Mm -hmm. And he's working on becoming a lawyer. He's a year out from having being a lawyer, okay? Yes. And he has a lot of uh, diagnoses, but he is a true success story. You don't have to have a disability. Well, you can have a disability and still, guess what? You can still succeed. Period. Because even success? you have had a disabled person in the office. What but, was that? For, uh, D not Douglas. Who was it? But can we... Can we redefine what success is? Yeah. Because that's, success that's for you. me is going to look different for, for you. I just want somebody to be happy. That's success. If you think of monetary success, mm -hmm. that's that's your doing? Yes. Yo. <laughs> right, Welcome back. Welcome back to Goddess Talk. All right. With our special guest, Miss Natasha Pierre. With all the certificates that, <laughs> that are needed to assist someone and I believe, let's say, healing. All Actually, right. you know what? The certifications that I... I got my life coaching. I was life coaching before I was life coaching. I was okay. career coaching yeah. before I got the All certification. The, yeah. I did that for the people who needed that me to be legitimate. I had a conversation That's with the only reason why like I did that. it. Because he's been doing a whole bunch of stuff uh, for years. And... I was like, at the end of the day, you need to get a certificate because you could keep talking, you could keep wanting to get booked and stuff, but if you don't have that comma, whatever, people are going to overlook you. And that's for them. But mm -hmm. you know what the work you've been doing. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But, you know, he did get it, and apparently he's been doing great things. Um, but those certificates are for other people. They're it's, not for people who are actually doing the work. They're not for the people who 
my clients don't care yeah. that I have a life coaching certification or that I... The only thing that I'd say that is a, a huge... Uh, a, a credential that I enjoy is my work incentives planning credential mm -hmm. which allows me to write plans for people who receive social security benefits mm -hmm. because many people are afraid to get back to work mm -hmm. because they think they'll lose either their cash or health benefit and yeah. so that's a credential that I love that I'm using but all of the other ones mm -hmm. um, that and then the wrap mm -hmm. um, wellness recovery action plan I love those two everything else is for the people who are not living with this yeah. every day yeah. who like well what makes you qualify to speak about yeah. mental health how about lived experience yeah but that's not even a qualification to them either because guess what they do overlook those who actually have mm -hmm. the disabilities supposed disabilities mm -hmm. you know because again a diagnosis is not that does not determine who you are as a person True. you know what i'm saying True. i have people who aren't diagnosed but they're straight a-holes <laughs> plain and simple but then I have clients who maybe have disabilities and they're the most caring people in the world mm -hmm. they will give you the, the shirt off their back and everything so it's like honestly it's who you are as a person that should dictate how people treat you yeah. not your diagnosis yeah. you know but you said something um, also but I want to go back to um, impulse control yeah because a lot of us so called normal which I know you say that's okay, not a word it's right. not because but impulse control, we lack impulse control ourselves, but swear that it's only those who are diagnosed that possibly lack that? What? They're not the ones. Look at, look at TV these days. Everybody impulse fighting and control. throwing beer bottles and stuff. What kind of impulse control is that? You know what? Impulse control is, is uh, let's just break it down. <laughs> your, whatever you have going on in your world, mm -hmm. diagnosis or not, death or not I don't care what it is that's not licensed to to to, to affect someone else's peace period yeah. I tell clients all the time I don't care what your diagnosis is I really don't I care about your ability mm -hmm. not your disability yes. and just because you have a disability doesn't mean the world revolves around you yeah. so when we're talking about mental health I really don't care what trauma you've been through that's mm -hmm. not the issue when it comes to how you're going to interact and engage with other people we share this planet and so you can't do anything that's going to affect my peace and I won't do anything to affect your peace yeah. now when we're talking about impulse control that goes back to self-regulation for many people who have a mood disorder um, actually let's just say everyone mm -hmm. because whether you're diagnosed or not you still have I see it at work disorder yes yeah, everyone has a mood disorder and even people who do not have a diagnosis or who may be walking around undiagnosed everyone has attitudes and moods and they don't feel like dealing yeah. with people and I get it and so self-regulation means when you didn't get your second cup of coffee or when you're having a low energy day mm -hmm. or when you spilled something on your shirt or you broke something you dropped your phone whatever it is that's your stuff mm. you gotta handle it and when we're talking about uh, a wellness plans it's it's counseling it's therapy it's journaling it's writing it's crystals it's spiritual baths it's manicures oh, and right. pedicures it's reiki I have my it's day. massages it's whatever you need to do to ensure day. that you are safeguarding yes. and maintaining your mental health that's not you're, you're not responsible for my mental no, health I'm Esteban not you're not responsible for yeah, mine yeah. I'm responsible for me and so if that means sometimes I say no if that means sometimes I quit. I disappear. If it means sometimes I disappear. If it means sometimes I'm working from home instead of out of Panera mm -hmm. or the office. Yeah. If it means that I have to cancel something. Yeah. My mental health is more important. And it's going to sound harsh, but I'm going to say it. Your mental health is more important than someone's feelings. Okay, so we were having a conversation about this earlier. And it took me a long time to get to this. And my friend today, she she's my Leo. We really get some real conversations between the two of us. And she was like, you have allowed people to kind of just leech off of you. Mm. She's like, They've, you've allowed them to leech off of your energy, good energy, um, finances, and everything else, right? And I had a couple things happen within the past year where it's just I just needed space from mm -hmm. everybody, 
like period and I was unapologetic about it and I refused to apologize for it because I was like I need my space Good and by you. the time I finally came to try to talk about it it wasn't received again I'm not going to uh, say that the person should have should have received me better that's not the case because mm-hmm. they're going through their stuff and that ain't got nothing to do with me right. but what I said was that hey I was going through something and it had nothing to do with you and so that doesn't mean that I don't want to be a friend or any of this stuff. It's just literally I was going through something. I felt some type of way, and this is what it is. I've gone through it. I'm fine now, but I'm I'm ready to move forward. Mm-hmm. It didn't seem like they were, and so that's just how things ended. So now that's happened in very a lot of you know sexual partner relationships as well because hey, people disappear at times. You know, a lot of people don't know how to cope with certain things, and when emotions are part of it. Depending on who it is and how you've adjusted in life or not adjusted, you may have to ghost people. And we shouldn't always take it as a bad thing when someone goes ghost because they may be going through something that they have not even been able to fathom to even comprehend to speak about. And it's just like you need to give them that space without you thinking it's about you. They they fell off on you or they're not really down with you. That's not it. They may just need their space. Release people release them because if you have that expectation people are always going to be forever you're going to be hurting and I hurt for a long time because of thinking forever and having those expectations so there's a lot going on okay. there uh huh first I'm going to start with the individual with the you with mm-hmm. the me mm-hmm. with you Esteban mm-hmm. self awareness <laughs> self awareness self regulation mm-hmm. I'm going to throw in two other selves because this is what I work with high school students on mm-hmm. Self-determination and Mm self-advocacy. Self-determination is you have a choice. Mm -hmm. You have a right to make choices based on what you deem is best for you. That's your choice just by being a human, simply because you exist. Mm -hmm. The other part of that is self-advocacy. That's when you tell people how to help you. That's Mm -hmm. when you communicate and speak Mm -hmm. your choice. Mm -hmm. And so I've ghosted people before. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, just went away, and and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But I will always recall I had a friend who, during the initial stages of my diagnoses, would text me every single day mm-hmm. because the relationship meant that much to her. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a te- it yeah. wasn't a test. I yeah. wasn't testing yeah. her. But she just knew something's going on with Natasha mm-hmm. and I'm gonna let her know every day that I'm there for her. Mm-hmm. So how do I deal with it now? At the times when I need to disappear, I'm grateful that I have wonderful mm-hmm. friends around me that I can say, Hey, need some space, I'm need some time, minute, yeah. gone for a minute, mm-hmm. I'll be back. For the ones who are unable to handle that and who deal who internalize it. Mm-hmm. And here's the reality. Sometimes it's a person's own insecurity with themselves that compel them to want to force you to explain and to articulate what you are not yet able to articulate to yourself. Mm -hmm. And here's for everyone that's watching. Here's the reality. When it comes to mental health, because there's so much stigma, because no one's talking about it, the people who are experiencing anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, um, paranoia, delusions, etc., They don't know what's going on with themselves. Mm -hmm. And so before they can articulate and explain to you, they've got to be able to explain it to themselves. So can you give them some space? Can you give them some grace, some peace? Just say, you know what, I'm here for when you need me. I'm not going away. Mm -hmm. And the way that I deal with it now is I believe in reason, season, lifetime. Mm -hmm. And and I adhere to that. So if you are unable Mm -hmm. to stand with me Mm -hmm. during my tough season, it's okay. I release you in love. Look, say that again, release in love, meaning that I don't have any drama with anybody. I don't have any malice towards anybody. I literally am still living my life and still speaking to people so highly, even after the fact that they may not speak about me, but it's like, uh, I don't have a problem. But it's releasing in love and releasing. That was the biggest test and lesson and most beautiful experience to finally find that release in myself. Because it's very hard. Mm -hmm. Because we want what we want. True. Especially Aries. We want what we want when we want it. (laughs) But it's like, you know what? This isn't happening. And I release you. I love you. But I release you. I release you from the pain that you may feel with me. I release you from my presence. I release you from my energy. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with and any so, of that. And so with the conversation about mental health, let's talk about some things that can mirror 
a mental illness, mm -hmm. but really are you need to clean up your personal life. Forgiveness, mm -hmm. rage, anger, resentment, disappointment, having people around you that are parasitic and mm -hmm. leeching off of you, relationships that are not mutually beneficial, mm -hmm. all cycle. of that stress yeah. and frustration mm -hmm. can look like, appear like mm -hmm. a mental illness, mm -hmm. but all you need to do is just block some people on social media, right. unfollow, unfollow yeah, that's well. it, yeah. just get rid of them and you will be amazed. There are some, I'm at the place right now thankfully because my mental health is my responsibility uh. i unfriend and i block and i release and 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 i do it with i don't owe anyone an explanation yeah. because my mental health is more important than your feelings mm -hmm. and if i'm supposed to reconnect with someone in the future then god will see that it is so mm -hmm. but for this season you are not the person that i can have around me and there's nothing wrong with that because people will feel like oh they're old an explanation that this it's like nobody owes anybody anything no that was the biggest lesson i learned i owe nobody anything and they owe me nothing in return mm -hmm. so if i operate from that space i can move within my life literally unapologetic of being happy mm -hmm. having peace having peace. having peace is the biggest thing out of all of this when it comes to mental health or dealing with traumas or anything everybody is seeking peace absolutely and happiness absolutely. you know but we'll be right back um if you want to call us to 844 813-444-9588 this is in touch news it's goddess talk talk to you soon i um i am i'm a huge proponent of doing whatever brings you peace even if it's unconventional, even if other people aren't doing it, even if it looks strange or weird okay. or odd. Oh well. Oh well. Medicines? I We don't have enough time for me to get into. So, no. Listen, we're, we're, I'm not anti-medicine. No. But no, that shouldn't that's be your first thing. That, yeah. thing. that shouldn't be the first thing no that worries. you go, go to. So what we're going to do is um, the next section we can call it about medicating. Okay. No, because you know, again, um, it's all about the conversation. A lot of people think that mental disabilities are myths. Of course they of do. Course. People it's were shocked therapy and all that. Sh sh yeah. You know what? Back because in the day. many people look at a mental illness as a character flaw. In the church world, it is because you haven't renewed your mind and you're not thinking on the things that are lovely and pure and good and yeah. all of that stuff. And if you just align yourself more with the word, you do then all the the beating of yourself, you know, <laughs> you'll be forgiven and, and all that stuff. Every every person has the same mental in the world react. Differently. Absolutely. Not it's not cookie cutter. Everyone does not have the same experience. You can go through the same exact situation, but you experience your own internal battle differently. Mm -hmm. Your own visceral reactions differently. Absolutely. Because when I'm really thoroughly stressed, like literally my eyes may turn red. My eyes are never red. My eyes are bright white. And then all of a sudden you just see a streak come and it's like, I got to fall back. Mm -hmm. Or having literally like my, my friend of mine, so I had a whole panic attack recently. <laughs> And it was to the point that I couldn't eat. Yeah. And I'm talking about for days on it, I just couldn't eat. And I was like, yeah, I'm going it's through real. it right now. And I just need some space. That's real. And so, I, like I said, I've been blessed where some friends literally know that B's going through something. And there's nothing about them that has to do with it. Absolutely. I'm going to link up with y'all when we link up. Hey, it's God is Talk. We are back with Natasha Pierre. We're talking mental health. And just a lot of different things that go with spirituality, even just dealing with our own selves, you know, being self-aware about issues we're going through, um, having that self-regulation, impulse control, <laughs> um, self-determination, self-advocacy. And I think this last part of our segment, let's talk about medicating. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us see that a lot of our children are being over-medicated at a very young age for things that are human responses to certain situations, all right? A lot of our adults, I work with the adult population of developmental disabilities and they're being overly medicated because nobody wants to deal with the behavior. They don't, nobody wants to see them crying and, or see them, you know, bouncing off the walls where if we could figure out the other things around them that could help bring them peace and, you know, solidify their, um, their grounding, mm -hmm. I feel that's like a ground chakra situation yes, right there, yes. um, they wouldn't need to be medicated so hard. So let's talk about medication. We know we are in this country. It's a pharmaceutical country. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what's your thoughts on the whole medicating? Well, as of today, August 1st, 2019, 740 
49 p.m. there is no medicine that can erase your memory so if you have experienced a trauma if you've experienced any pain you're going to have to process that and go through it mm. I'm not anti-medication I think that sometimes medication is necessary especially psych medicine yeah. however it is not suitable as a long-term fix mm -hmm. For anyone, especially with mood disorders, dealing with anxiety, you're going to have to process some of what are your triggers. You're going to have to understand you and you're going to have to have a, a wellness plan that that supports you in the way that you need. Mine, I, I talk about a mental health toolkit. You know, the toolkit in your trunk, you've got a wrench, a hammer, a screwdriver, some nails, mm -hmm. you've got a fix it fly, you got a couple things just in, in case. Your trunk, yeah. And that's how it has to be with your mental health. Mm -hmm. You may need manicures, some puppies, some kittens. Self medication. Self, well, you need self care. Yeah. You need to do that. Some and people, part of that, yeah. therapy and coaching. Listen, if you've been through any, especially trauma, mm -hmm. if you've been through trauma, you're going to have to talk it out. Yeah, Whether you do friends. friends, but you know, family. sometimes you need a clinician, you need yeah. someone who is trained to help walk you through that. Yeah. But medication, I, I've tell people we do not medicate sadness, we do not use medication as a well, I you know, let me just take a, a B12 shot. That's not what medication is. Medication, in my opinion, is when your symptoms are interrupting and disrupting daily functioning. Yeah, so if it's anxiety attack and you're unable to leave home and get to work. Yes, that's a situation where medication can be used. If you are sad, that's not a medication no, situation. That's not. It's but not. some people self medicate with things like drugs, alcohol, um, gambling, we know, shopping. Yeah, we know we know those to be regular things that you know acceptable. Do. Acceptable because that's that's normal. That's what society has built up to be the mm -hmm. thing that we all do. Everybody's popping X and doing all this stuff, and it's like that's not the case, right. you know. But um, medicating, I've seen the the physical um, detriment to your body because those things take a toll on your body, on your health. If you're on medications for a long time, you could have kidney failure. Y'all listen to these commercials. Hey, have you taken these things and have you experienced this? Oh, you could yeah. be, you know, you could be part of a lawsuit about the situation. You know, but the pharmaceutical companies are protected by the government because you can't sue them directly for things that the doctors are being paid to kind of give you at the same time. With medication, um, for me, in 2013, I had acute kidney failure, mm -hmm. and I am 100% certain that it was linked to the medicine that I was taking at the time. Mm -hmm. um, some psych medicine can make you suicidal. Very. It says homicidal. It. it says it. It is. Those are the side effects that's not included in the commercial. So parents, when you think that you're just giving your child just something yeah. to help them focus, yeah. we do not medicate medicate uh, being a child. No. That's not a mental illness. Being a child, you know, a six-year-old boy will jump on things. A ten-year-old boy will want to play. We do not give a child medication because you need some alone time. Yeah. So, we're going to stop there because I want you to be able to promote yourself. So, talk about, do you have any books to share? Yes, Anything yes, like yes. That? I uh, published my first book last February. It's called Provoking Thoughts, which okay. is also the name of my Monday night show, okay. Provoking Thoughts, 101 Inspirational Quotes for Daily Living, mm -hmm. and that's available on Amazon. Mm -hmm. What I'm really, really proud of is coming up on September 22nd, I'll be part of a live show in Orlando for This Is My Brave. Mm -hmm. This Is My Brave is, it's, it's more than a movement now. There's a documentary, you can find it on YouTube, but I'm going to be part of, I think, 14 or 15 member cast, mm -hmm. and we're going to be sharing our stories and our experiences mm -hmm with mental health, with mental health diagnoses. Really, really excited about it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be my first time publicly yeah. sharing my full diagnoses. And I'm excited about it. Again, people need to see that sometimes a person who might be experiencing a mental health crisis might look like me, might look like you, mm -hmm. might look like any, any of about, you. Any of us. And so I'm excited about that. And I'm transitioning, and every so often I have to do that. So I'm moving away from some of the things I've been doing over the last year mm -hmm. and three years. I want to work uh, a little bit more directly with clients. So mm -hmm. stay tuned. I may have some slots opening for new okay. clients. So if they were to try to get to become a client of yours, mm -hmm. what is the information that you can provide at this time for them to either take a phone number down or find you on the website? What Give them your, um, your information. Absolutely. In that so if you're watching me on Facebook 
or you see this on, on Facebook, connect with me on Facebook, either facebook.com simply Natasha or facebook.com Natasha Pierre Official. I'm also on Instagram, Natasha Pierre Official. You can find me on Twitter. That's my name, P-I-E-R-R-E. -E. Uh -huh. Connect with me there, and the website is natashapierre.com. This is what I do. Every day, all day, I talk about mental health. So I'm happy. Yeah. Thank you for Thank, having me. Thank you for coming. Thank no, you. this was a great experience for me because we were talking about so much other stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I want you back after, especially after the show. Yes. So how can they see the show? What's, what is it going to be on Netflix or where is it going to be? So on? we're doing the live show September 22nd. In it's Orlando. in Orlando. And okay. I'll post the link to my Facebook page. Okay. But just look up This Is My Brave. Go to events. You can purchase tickets there. I believe it's $20. We mm -hmm. have 300 seats and okay. people are getting them. So if so, you want it, get it now. Yeah. And then after, I'm sure it's going to be released on the website and on YouTube. So okay. even if you're not in the Orlando area, you'll still be Seriously. able to. Yeah. see it and we'll definitely watch it and then if i can find some tickets or you know september what september 22nd Tw september 22nd yes oh 9 22 that's the that's gonna be the seventh year anniversary for my company in jersey really? <laughs> 9 22 then yeah have to be i there. have to be there that's gonna be a celebration <laughs> okay so thank you so much for coming um is there anything else that you would like to let people know about you well you're from the caribbean she's from yes. st thomas y'all so she could tell y'all where to go in st thomas to have a great time i've been there before yes. um you have you have just such a beautiful energy you're also a reiki practitioner i am all right am. so the next show we're gonna have you on here we're gonna talk about all these things yes. the spiritual side reiki not just the mental health all that, yes. so um again this is goddess talk if you guys have any questions drop it in the comments we're gonna talk about everything else i could you know respond in comments about any issues you have um is there anybody you want to give a shout out to Ooh, my <laughs> core tribe to um, okay. Catherine, my best friend, uh -huh. to Shanique, okay. to Shina. Okay. Those three have been with me for years, okay. and those are my my go to, my ride or die. I um, also have a. You have a lot of people. Yes. All right. <laughs> so let's say this. This has been Goddess Talk. Um, if you have any questions for us, if you want to be a sponsor on Goddess Talk, you can hit us at info at Goddess Talk cast.com you can go on our website which is goddesstalkcast.com if you want to be a sponsor a vendor all those things but we will see you next week we have another special guest next week um but looking forward to seeing you all this is balaji with goddess talk y'all have a beautiful evening all right, all right.